If you feel frustrated, disappointed, burnt out, and like you need to take a shower every time you close your dating app, today I'm gonna show you seven proven ways to be pursued by better men in the real world without being at the mercy of the algorithm tyrant inside your dating app. Dating apps have become today for most women the equivalent of getting a bikini wax. It's dreadful, it's painful, it's time consuming, but feels better than the alternative. Having worked with so many women for 12 years to help them find their ideal life partners, I can also share that I've yet to find one who's jumping up and down with excitement at the notion of using them. Now, my caveat on this video is that I believe that dating apps can work. There's a mindset and there's a strategy to use them to your advantage, but if you're watching this video, my guess is you're a little bit tired of that. So this video is for you if you want to either completely be done with them and start fresh, creating new connections face-to-face -face in a way that people used to do years and years ago, or if you want to complement your online dating with offline dating so that you're not at the mercy of the algorithm, that you have more options, then this video can work for you as well. Hello, my name is Bern, and if you'd like to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, and develop intimacy skills, make sure to click subscribe on the bottom below so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. One of the biggest questions women have when they're at the mercy of dating apps is where can I meet great men? So in this video today, I'm gonna share some fresh ideas of where to do this, but I'm here to say that that's not the problem. The problem is not just the where, it's the why, it's the how, and it's the who. Let me explain. Why are you connecting with men? If you go out simply for the purpose of connecting with men to catch a husband, that's gonna feel heavy, it's gonna feel demeaning at times. If your goal is to create some spiritual growth in a way that you wouldn't have done it had you just stayed in your comfort zone, if you want to enhance your life, if you want to develop a skill of communication, of connection, of flirting that will be invaluable for you for the rest of your life, that's a stronger why that can help you get the job done in a way that feels less painful and more personal in nature. The how is what we're gonna talk about right now. There's a few steps that are really important, and if you do them the way I'm sharing with you, you can have exponentially better results than before. And then it's the who, because there's a version of you that's excited, happy, upbeat, connected, radiant. There's a version of you that's slightly jaded, afraid, not confident, and a bit bitter. And if that's the version of you that creates the connections, then you'll have exponentially different results. Step number one, if you want to create amazing connections with men offline and have them pursue you is you need to develop the art of opening and closing your energy. <laughs> Here's what I mean by that. If your energy were completely open, if you're a radiant goddess walking through the streets of your city, you'd get so much unwanted attention that you wouldn't know how to deal with it. If, on the other hand, what you've done as a result of getting some unwanted attention, some painful relationships in the past, maybe fears around not knowing how to set boundaries, then what happens is you close your energy completely. And what you need to learn to do is how do you express more radiance and openness when you need to? And how do you close the energy when you get attention of the kind you don't want or when you have to do something other than connecting with guys? The question I want you to keep in mind as you step into the art of opening and closing is if you were a man standing across the room from where you are looking at you, would you seem open? Would you seem friendly? Would you seem connected to him? Or would you seem distant, disconnected, and minding your own business? Step number two is you need to start dropping the handkerchief, which goes hand in hand with step number one. Dropping the handkerchief means that guys who are of a non-psychopath nature are gonna need some hint from you that you're open, interested, that you're not gonna punch them metaphorically in the nuts if they approach you. In this day and age where there's, thank God, more consent and a Me Too movement that has shaken up guys who were doing things in a very dysfunctional way, men who are kind and who are good are gonna be slightly more skeptical about connecting with someone that's not showing that she's interested. Showing that you're interested doesn't mean you're desperate. Showing that you're interested doesn't mean that you're pursuing the guy. It simply means that you're dropping a handkerchief that he can then come and pick up. There's three very simple steps to drop a handkerchief. Number one is make eye contact. When you enter a room, if you find someone that's interesting, or if you find someone that you're excited about, make sure that you make eye contact. Step number two is make sure that you smile. 
Eye contact and smiling is a clear sign to that person's psyche that you're not gonna punch them in the nuts if they approach you. Third step is start a conversation. And how do you start a conversation? Ask a question, give a compliment, make a statement. What you're doing in essence with these three steps is you're making sure that the guy understands that you're safe to approach, that you're interested in connecting with them, that if he asks you a question, you'll reply instead of rejecting him, because guys, regardless of their strong demeanor, we feel fear of rejection more frequently than you can imagine. When you do these three steps, if you follow them and the guy answers a question and doesn't ask you another question, safe to move on. If the guy asks you a question in return and you can start a small conversation, that is the beginning of something that can either grow or not grow, but you're in the game, you're playing right now. You're putting your love life into your own hands. Step number three is I need you to make the commitment to detach from the immediate outcome. You have an outcome at the end of the day, which is you want to find your life partner and you want to do it without having to use apps. That means that you're going to have to, in the short term, detach from the outcome. Because if you connect with a guy and your outcome in the back of your mind is, I need to get him to get my number, that's so much pressure on you and that's intimidating and that's going to make you be weird trying to manipulate the situation in some way to make him like you. If your goal is simply to connect, to offer your gift, you have a diamond that you can offer. If the person likes it, he can take it. If he doesn't like it, the diamond is still worth just as much and the person two degrees to the right can take it. Then you don't put the pressure that something has to come from it and you celebrate when you connect with a guy. Even if he doesn't ask you more questions, if he doesn't ask for your number, you celebrate the fact that you did it. And every time you do this, you get stronger and stronger. Now, you may have to go through a few guys before something great happens, but I can promise you, if you make it a must every single week to practice this, you'll get better at it, you'll be less intimidated by it, and you'll create stronger conversations, will be more spontaneous, and you'll get guys to ask for your number. You can start a dating process that's gonna feel so fulfilling for you because it's something that didn't exist before. You made it happen just by putting yourself out there in a more conscious way. Now, before I go through steps four through seven, if you're a single woman, listen to me right now, I love to help you understand the true reason, not the surface level reason, psychologically, emotionally, why you're still single. I've taken 12 years of helping women find love, put them together in a very simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that can give you the answer to this question. So all you have to do if you want to find the answer to why you're still single is make sure to click the first link on the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and the next 60 seconds you have two things. The answer to the question why you're still single. Number two, a report that shows you based on your specific blind spot what is the next best step you can take to reverse this and attract the guy you want. Step number four is you need to modify your lifestyle to be able to create more connections. If you go from home to work, from work to home, and every now and then you go out with your girlfriends and you talk amongst yourselves and you go back to your home and you're on your computer all day and you're on your mobile phone, chances are you don't have a lifestyle that is conducive to creating connections face to face. So what you have to do is you have to evaluate, well, if I get coffee at home, can I go get coffee by myself sometimes at Starbucks or somewhere that's cool? If I order groceries online, can I go to the grocery store instead? There is no single convention of conscious, masculine, beautiful men who get together uh, every few months in different cities. You can find amazing guys pretty much everywhere if, you're, if you know how to look, but you have to make sure that your lifestyle allows for the connection with new people. If you go to the same places, you have to visit new places. If you're closed up with a group of friends, you have to be willing to do things on your own sometimes. Number five is I need you to ditch your phone. Many women and men today hide behind their phone. And if you enter any of the places that I'm about to share with you in step number seven, and your fear mechanism is to look at your phone, it, you're gonna miss out on so much. So put your phone in your purse and put it on vibrate so you don't hear it when it's ringing and make sure that you engage with people that allow silence to sit in. Look around the room, make eye contact. You'll be far more likely to express and to connect and to emote if you don't have a distraction like your phone that you can hide behind. I'd rather you actually cut the experience shorter than draw it out more, but you were reading a book or listening to something that wasn't allowing you to create connections. Number six is I need you to prime 
for emotional radiance. Here's the thing, you come back from work, you're about to go out to create connections, you may not be in the best emotional space to be radiant. So what you wanna do is you wanna take some time before you go out and put yourself out there to do a ritual that allows you to shine more. You may dance, you might sing, you might exercise, you might take a cold shower, or a combination of all those things. You might watch something inspirational, but the goal is for you to be vibrating strongly inside, so when you put yourself out there, you don't have to do all the work. Your energy and your radiance and your light are helping you to get what you want, instead of working super hard to create the connections that you're looking for. Last step is, what are fun, new, cool, fresh places you can connect with men? I say, sure, you can connect with guys anywhere if your lifestyle has changed in such a way that allows for this. But these are things you can start doing this weekend. I mean, you can go to maybe a coffee shop and make, make sure, but here's, here's the goal. If you go to a coffee shop, make it a must to not leave that coffee shop before you actually have a small conversation with someone. Give yourself the challenge of going to places and not leaving the space unless it's empty before you create at least one connection. You go to a gym, you can ask a guy any number of questions. You can smile, you can compliment him, you can exercise next to him, you can ask him how to use specific equipment he's using if you don't know how to use it. Grocery store, and again, you can go to Walmart or you can go to Whole Foods, one of them probably will be uh, better fit for you, you decide what it is. You can go to a political rally where you can connect with someone that has the similar type of outlook on life and values. You can go to a book signing or a bookstore and ask questions. Bookstores are great because they allow you to create, ask questions about anything, anything you're reading, anything he's reading. You can go to a meetup. You can just connect, you can download the app or go to meetup.com and find what are activities that are taking place in your city that will allow you to create connections with guys whose whole purpose is not just to go learn something, but go learn something and connect with people. You can go to a church or church activities. You can go to a wine tasting. You can go to a dog park. Guys who treat their dogs properly, probably good quality guys in some ways. You can go to a hardware store. I mean, I mean guys who like to build things, go to hardware stores. You can go to a co-working space where it was gonna give you infinite possibility to create connections with guys who are entrepreneurial, who are smart, or who have something going on, or who work for a cool comp for a cool startup, you'll be able to create connections and ask questions. Again, these places lend themselves to friendship and to connection. Uh, rock climbing gym. Again, you'll find guys who are into better themselves. You want somebody who's active, then take the plunge and go to a rock climbing gym. You can go to a car wash. I'm gonna cut it short right now. There's more places you can go to, but the goal right now is for you to choose one of these and start practicing what I shared with you today. So if you like this video, please click like and thumbs up, <laughs> subscribe to my channel, and I, share with me in a comment what's the number one takeaway you have from watching this video.